Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the Q&A. Uh, my name is Laura Good, and I'm one of the programmers of the Canadian Film Fest. And I'm here with two of our filmmakers, the filmmaker of our short film, Not My Age, Caitlin Lee, and the filmmaker of our feature presentation, Beneath the Surface, Marie-Jean Viechevaux. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Having us. Thank you. And so just to give those listening a little bit of a sense of the format, that I have discussed with Caitlin and Marie Jambier. We're gonna start off by speaking about the short film, which you saw first, Not My Age, a little bit. And then we're going to dig into the feature presentation beneath the surface. So I will start off by asking Caitlin, if you could tell us a little bit about what the inspiration for this film was. Uh, what was the moment that you knew you had to make it? Yeah. Um, to be honest, it just started with an image that I had in my mind of um, this grandma just putting her head out the window. It just, I have watched a lot of coming of age films and I really um, love the moments where people are just experiencing life and just doing reckless things for no reason. And I really wanted to play with that, that idea and um, see what it would be like with a grandma. So yeah, that's kind of where the idea came from. I love that. And that's one of the most wonderful moments in the film, certainly. Uh, another moment that I really love and that I think is the emotional core of the film is the scene in the rain and the vulnerability there. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that turn because the film is so light and beautiful and life affirming in so many ways and you know almost more of a has more of a light comedic tone until you kind of get to this moment where there's this intense moment of vulnerability and it's a bit of a turn um, into more dramatic territory and um, more emotional content and how you handled that as a director. Yeah um, yeah as you said like it's it's a really important scene I think um, I really focused on the character and how um, for her, I think it's, she's lived her whole life, like kind of um, with a certain mindset, like really trying to embody this idea of like just living in the moment. But um, I think when she's like, struggling with the limitations of her body and whether she can still live in this way and still be this kind of like youthful character that she values so much um it's yeah it's really it's really painful for her to like kind of realize that oh maybe I can't live my life in the same way that I have been, or maybe I need to change or adapt. And I think um, in that moment, like she just realizes that she has something's got to give, you know? And so, um, yeah, I just really had her feelings in mind. And I, I talked with the actor about it, and we really built the character together. So, yeah. That's really cool that the that your cast was involved in the character building. And I think both characters in the film, the main characters are so strong. Uh, and it's also great to see a female-centered film like this, multi-generational. Can you talk a little bit a, a little bit more about that process and also the initial casting process of how you found the grandmother and granddaughter and how you worked together to sort of build the film into what it is? Yeah, so um, I, so with the granddaughter character, she is my friend, um, Jennifer Chan, and we made the film as part of um, this Asian film competition called Mighty Asian Movie Making Marathon in Vancouver. Um, and so um, Jen and I actually um, brainstormed the idea together and um, sort of collaborated to pitch to this competition. So I already knew going into making the film that um, Jen would be a main character. Um, and so it was 
when we had get, got the go-ahead to make the film, it was really just um, finding the, the grandma character. And so, yeah, the casting process, we just um, reached out on various platforms and also reached out to friends that we know um, to see if they knew anyone who might fit the part. And um, um, yeah, it was, it's actually quite hard to find um, older actors sometimes. And so we actually only got like one application. Um, Maki, who's okay. who's the actress in it, um, was our only applicant. But um, when when we had our Zoom audition, where she um, read through a scene with Jen, like the chemistry was already like so apparent, even just through the screen. And so, yeah, we we really struck gold. Um, I think and they they really just play off each other in such a natural way so yeah that's very lucky because she's absolutely incredible and I was thinking <laughs> how did they find this actress she's remarkable um yeah. I wanted to ask you there are so many themes in this film from family to aging and to um you know society's viewpoints on how a woman should be of a certain age or a person should be and I was just wondering, what are the films that come to the fore for you or that you hope audiences will take away from it? Um, yeah, I think essentially for me, it's just a story of hope and a story about life. Um, I think, as you said, like with these themes that are so universal, I think anybody can relate to them, to them like me as a 19 year old um but then somebody who's like in their 30s or whatever and so I yeah I think at its core it's just about holding each other up um between generations and not letting um barriers get in the way but just like journeying through life together and um figuring ourselves out and it's like okay when things maybe don't go our way but we can always like get up and yeah it's just a story of hope well it's very beautifully put and the perfect segue to talking about beneath the surface with marie jambiev um so i think i'll shift over to you and ask you uh if you can tell us a little bit about the inspiration behind your documentary, which is also a multi-generational family portrait of sorts. Uh, what inspired you to make it? Well, I guess it was kind of a natural um, continuity with my last documentary, uh, Waiting for Spring, who was also shot in uh, Northern uh, Quebec, uh, also in this man's world, because for me, the, the North I found was very much um, a man's world in all the meanings. Um, and in that previous mo movie, I, I kind of met uh, wild characters, you know, those men that hide behind a shell and that are a little bit hard to approach. And I found that interesting to get close to those, those um, a uh, character that seemed very strong in, in appearance, but behind this shell, they are so fragile. They have so much emotion, so much feelings. And I wanted maybe in this, this uh, recent movie to go again, um, much closer to this uh, man's um, fragility. I wanted to get a little bit closer to, to, uh, to uh, their intimacy um, and uh, but by also talking about family, because family for me is a theme that is uh, it's um, well, it's recurrent, but also it touches always uh, much larger than the family, because you can always uh, relate to the character and uh, to maybe recognize some of your your own family. Uh, history, you know, everyone has known absence of uh, of a member of, of a family, and so when I had the the opportunity to uh, to capture this this story of the four men who goes into a fishing trip together, 
uh, three brothers with their father. And like I couldn't, I couldn't pass uh, uh, beside that subject. I had to ask if I could come with a camera uh, to capture this, this very uh, intimacy, this, this fishing trip uh, of their family. And of course they said no. <laughs> <laughs> and I understand. I, I was waiting for, for a no, um, but I insisted. And because, well, I knew, I knew them for a long time. So I had their, tr their trust. And because they trusted me that I would take care of their story and that I, I would be there with the camera, but with uh, great respect for, uh, for the moment, because it was very much delicate to capture that without breaking the natural, breaking the, this fragility uh, that we wanted to, uh, to, um, to, to talk about. Yeah. And that definitely comes through. You can tell that there was a great deal of trust yeah. and respect that would have had to exist for you to have such intimate access to your subjects. And it does feel almost like, you know, this omniscient perspective rather than a piece of traditional documentary filmmaking, which is what I really like about your style, is that there's this invisibility. Um, mm -hmm. Even though there is, of course, some formal work taking place, which we'll dig into more, uh, but it feels so authentic and seamless that you don't necessarily notice that it's taking place. Mm -hmm. um, which kind of brings me to my next question, which is about the film's form. Uh, so I find that a lot of what's so uh, impactful about the film for me are these small moments and small details that your cinematographer has captured and how they're woven throughout the film. So, you know, everything from a tangled fishing line to the ripples in the surface of the water to um, that static shot of the whole family uh, posing with their catch of the day uh, that sort of almost feels like a still life. And I was wondering how you arrived along with your cinematographer at the film's visual language, its yeah. visual aesthetic? Mm -hmm. Well, um, fishing is a theme that I really love to, to capture. I, th I feel it's very, it's always um, so cin cinematographic and fishing was also one of the theme in my last movie. So what I like about it is that there's this part of silence, of waiting, of rituals, of some repetitive gestures um, that I just loved to be there and um, get into that rhythm because fishing is a rhythm. So I really wanted it, that movie, it, that was really part of my intention to capture the, the, the true rhythm of the fishing. And when you get into this true rhythm, you get also into the true rhythm of the man's world because fishing for me is a way to enter the man's language, which is way more make, made of actions than sometimes words. They talk with, with their, with their um, you know, their physical uh, posture in the boat. Just by remarking where they sit in the boat, we can tell a lot of how they, they feel right now. And that was also part of our intentions when we get into the, the, the shooting, we knew we wanted to, um, to uh, take the time to look at those details, to be very uh, in that rhythm, which is, which, which is slow. We have to get into that state of almost immobility uh, to wait for the, the, the right details and to take the time to be very um, sensitive to those little gestures that can tell way much more than words. And the silence in the fishing was, was intended to be uh, part of the dialogues. And that's why we also take time and the camera also look often to the one that's that listen rather than the person who talks exactly because of that intention we had that that is part of the, the fishing language, the fishing code, the fishing rituals, which is so connected to how man's um, to the man's world, there's spirit to the spirit of this man's universe that I wanted to cap, although um, in the details also you can remark that the water element is a character as well. 
Th that's how I, I pictured it. For me, the water, the lake was also a, a character, but the, a, a female character. It's the women in the film. The women is in the film is all the water elements. And that's why we also um, attach the voice of the mother to the little uh, moments that we, we are close to the water, maybe sometimes even under the water. So that's a metaphor for all the feminine elements that is uh, finally almost everywhere. So for me, this man's world with all um, their language uh, was surrounded by the feminine elements, which is everywhere around in the natures, in the water. So in his absence, the woman is everywhere in their world, even though she's not, there's no, uh, there's no character, uh, like female character in the movie. That's beautiful. Well, and the mother is certainly very present in the dialogue and in the, in the reminiscing and in, yeah. in, in the, in the memory, as well as on this metaphoric level, as you speak about. Exactly. Um, I love that you talked about how the camera often settles on the man who is listening and not who is speaking, because that's something that really stood out to me as well. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, I assume it wasn't a multi-camera situation. I'm, I come from a family of fishermen, and so I know how small those boats are and also appreciate what you said about where everyone sits being a weighty, a weighty thing. Um, I assume that it was just the one camera. So is that how it was shot? Or is that something that came about in the editing process to sort of look to the body language and the silence of those who are not the ones speaking, but who are taking in what's being said? Well, we had the this limitation of the boat. So we had to fit four uh, quite big men with two ladies. <laughs> with a, so we had we had to to take off some part of the of the team <laughs> because it, it couldn't fit with all the equipments, the camera. So we had to be only two. So we had the, 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 the camera, uh, my, my friend who was doing the camera and me who was doing the sound and directing. So I couldn't afford to have a, a third person to hold the sound boom. So I had to do my, my own sound because it, it couldn't fit. Sometimes we even had, like it was, it was really, really, uh, like really, really um, narrow. Yeah. So that's interesting that the formal choice dovetailed with the technical necessity of sort of that being the mother of an invention. That's interesting. Um, I also want to ask you a bit about, I love everything you've had to say about the film's exploration of masculinity. That's certainly what resonated with myself and the programming committee as well. And I noticed that you did dedicate the film to your son, Robin. What do you hope that your son or others, other young men or other people who, who are seeing this film take away from it? When I started the movie a few years ago, my, my son wasn't born, wasn't even uh, part of my life. Um, I started the movie because I had this opportunity to get closer to this man's world. There's the man's cliche and the theme of abandonment, which I don't know why, was um, touching me a lot. And I found that those men were very courageous too. Although there's, those stories are everywhere in, in every family, this particular family was doing something different, which, which was getting together for a few days and uh, not, um, getting escaped from each other. It was, we are going to break the silence between each other and talk about the past, which I think, well, it's, it's quite rare, rare to see that. Um, but at that time, I didn't knew that I was doing this movie for my boy um, because uh, it's about his father. So the father of my boy is one of the character of the movie and the the, the father of the three brothers is his grandfather. So at, at the final, um, it's, it's a history of my boy's uh, um, family story. And 
he also has to face the same uh, absence. So the story is repeating itself. Although they know, they know, uh, they know about uh, absence of the father, but they themselves um, repeat, even though they don't, they don't want to. You know, it's 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 a thing. It's a schema. We call it schema in French. So a pattern. It's a pattern, and you can't escape from the pattern because you're just repeating it. Uh, again and again, from one generation to another, and without blaming anyone. Like, I don't have any bad judgment on that because sometimes absence could can be the thing to do. Sometimes absence can be the good thing to do instead of being, um, to give a wrong presence. And that's why I don't have any bad judgment on this absence now because I, 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 I live this, this story from the inside. Now it's the story of my son and I see it from another point of view, from the, the point of view of the mother. And I couldn't know that when I started the project, but now it's a, it's a heritage for my son to understand his own family's story. Well, thank you so much for sharing this deeply personal and incredibly beautiful film with us. And both your film and Caitlin's film are, are, you know, striking a lot of similar chords in terms of intergenerational family relationships and are both equally, I think, human and universally relatable in a lot of ways, depending on no matter what your family situation is, you can, you can relate to the emotional core of both of these films. Um, I do want to finish off by asking if Caitlin, you, and then also um, Marie Jambiev can speak to what is next for the film and or for yourself so that audiences can look out for where to follow you or your work. Do you want to start off, Caitlin? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, we're putting the film in a couple more festivals, just waiting to hear back from some. Um, but yeah, that's kind of <laughs> it for the film. Um, for me, I'm just in school right now. Um, I'm actually uh, studying at UBC um, for a sociology degree, so not really related to film, but um, I, I'd really love to do film projects in the future. And uh, yeah, so maybe you can watch out for some of those in the future. Definitely, we hope to have you back. And Marie Jean-Viet, how about yourself and your film? We hope to um, to present it in a movie theater in, in Quebec because it uh, it didn't uh, it it hasn't been shown yet in in Quebec. Well, in in real in real life. <laughs> yeah. So we really hope to. We're looking really forward to meet the, the public here in Quebec that uh, doesn't have any chance yet to to see it. So maybe this spring it's coming. Um, and for myself, I'm I'm uh, right now uh, working on the next project, which is completely it's 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 funny because I didn't plan to make this masculine cycle with my two past movies, but now I'm starting really much on um on feminine themes. Uh, it's it's a total new world which which aboard more uh, approach more feminine themes, uh, how to be a, a mother, women, uh, free women. So and, and it's it also. It's, it stays also in the family universe, so very intimacy, uh, again, approach. Um, but I think my masculine cycle is maybe completed, although I never planned it that way. <laughs> but uh, now maybe I have to reconciliate both feminine and masculine has to be reconciliated. Yes, well, I'm really excited to see the, perhaps the final film in a trilogy. We'll see how it how all dovetails <laughs> together. Yeah. Thank you so much again to you both for joining us. And I just want to say thank you to our audiences at the Canadian Film Fest for tuning in. We'll see you for the next one. Thank, thank you so much. Sit back, relax when it's the greatest. Don't get back.